Hi, I'm Neil Evans with the Harkin Tech team. We're here to have a discussion we've wanted to have for a long time regarding stainless steel. In my job here at Harkin, I talk to customers literally every day. One of the discussions that comes up quite frequently is regarding stainless steels and stains on it. A lot of customers believe our quality has slipped and our stainless steel quality has gone down. That's far from the case. I've been here 25 years and it's a conversation that I've literally had from day one until today. We have Phil here at a, with, from our quality department who will talk to some of those concerns and those issues as well. Quality Phil, give us the truth on stainless. Uh, so one thing you've got to understand about stainless steel is um, there's at least five different types of stainless steel. Um, there's your austenitic grade, your ferritic grade, your martensitic grade, precipitation hardening grade, and our duplex stainless. Um, all of them have their own properties, um, but essentially they should all be very corrosion resistant. Um, and I can speak uh, anecdotally that our quality has actually increased um, by we've been putting harder, stricter standards on what we're getting from suppliers, um, what testing we're going through, and um, you know, trials and, and just really, really getting down to the nitty gritty to make sure that we have the best product leaving here. So our quality's up? Yes. Then why the hell am I still getting phone calls? Uh, well, it's a real common misconception that stainless steel won't stain. Um, it's, it's not maintenance free by any means. You absolutely have to take care of your product. All stainless steel is gonna have its issues with staining, per se. Stainless steel only really has about uh, a real thin, I mean, nanometers thick um, passive layer. Uh, that passive layer actually will break down over time. I mean, with wear, uh, with seawater, uh, these contaminants can actually start to break down that layer and get into your substrate or right beneath it. So, what am I show you? All right. So, uh, what we got here is basically a real rough drawing, because I'm no artist, of uh, your basic stainless steel substrate and the chromium oxide layer that is your passive layer. Um, and what you're seeing here is basically your, your iron oxide, that's a pit that formed. Uh, what essentially is happening is the, there's a chemical reaction going on that the iron is being pulled up after the pitting occurred. It's gonna actually start to show on the surface here. Uh, what we're essentially doing in repassivating this is when you scrub this away and you scrub down enough to that substrate, you're going to remove all that iron oxide. And essentially, as you start applying these other acids to repassivate the surface, you're rebuilding up this passive layer. And that's why it takes a little bit of time and you want it to sit because you want that chromium oxide to really build up. Uh, here is a really great example of one of the many types of corrosion you're going to see. Um, this is actually, it's called free iron. Uh, essentially what happens is you have an iron part that's touching your stainless steel and it's actually bleeding onto it. Um, so this can actually be removed uh, and then repassivated uh, pretty easily. We see this quite often when people are installing stainless steel pieces such as a pad eye or a deck cup in this case and the fasteners they may be stainless but the tool they're using is an iron tool and that iron tool leaves free iron behind and it shows staining then on the outside of the stainless the stainless itself hasn't broken down at all it's just leaving a stain on the outside of the the material yeah. as in this case. Yeah, absolutely. A, a, a big thing that I see a lot of the times is, oh, I, I used steel wool because, you know, that cleaned it up. Well, you're transferring all that, that iron back into that. Um, you're not helping yourself by any means. The best thing to do is, is use like a, a green scrubby pad or some sort of nylon based scrubby or even a non purist brush, like some of those bronze brushes that you have. Um, those are great. Uh, again, you just want to clean off that, that layer of, of corrosion that you're seeing. And then again, once that's nice and clean, uh, you want to apply something to repassivate that layer and let it sit. You know, let it sit for maybe, you know, 10 minutes even. And that should be plenty to, to build up that, 
that chromium oxide. You know, that's, that's the, real, the real protection. When you really want to worry, um, if you start to see, you know, like a fatigue crack and you've got corrosion in there, uh, absolutely, you know, get on the phone. Let's, let's get that off your boat. Let's take a look at it. Um, you know, those cracks are a lot harder. You can't just get in there with a little brush and clean it. And you've already got some pretty good damage to your product. Um, that corrosion is just going to keep digging down and digging down, propagating that, that crack. Um, that's when you'd want to be concerned. Yeah. Anytime you're seeing material removed, you should be concerned. Yeah. Be it through, be material removing itself from each other with a crack or be it actually like. Yes. Yeah. If you've got real heavy pitting that you're noticing on some of your parts. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at that. Um, pitting shouldn't be confused with, I ran my hand over it and it didn't feel smooth anymore. Right. It, there's actually material removed and there's a texture change Correct. in the final cleaned item. Yep. Absolutely. So take me through repassivating again. What's the intent and what are we doing? Sure. Uh, so essentially what we're trying to do is restore that passive layer. Okay, the passive layer is essentially chromium oxide. Um, so it's, it's pretty simple. All you really want to do is, again, remove your, fur, your surface rust. Uh, you can do that, again, by using something as, as good as this bartender's best friend. Uh, the active ingredient in this is actually oxalic acid, um, and that is used commercially for passivating stainless steels, as well as your nitric acids um, and citric acids. Um, but again, it's, it's pretty easy to get a hold of one of these things. You definitely don't want to use those chloride-based cleaners that a lot of people have under their sink. Um, that, that is just, that's a big no-no. Uh, so again, all I'm doing here is I'm just lightly scrubbing off the, the, uh, the corrosion product. Give it a little bit of a rinse. And you can already see, I mean, that's, that's starting to shine up pretty nice. You're going to have little pockets in there. I would suggest getting a toothbrush or something that can really get into there. Uh, you know, and again, just avoid using anything that's a steel base for, uh, for your abrasive. And there you go, that's already, that's already looking really great. Um, and again, I would just dry this off and you're good to go. So you would just let that air dry versus like taking a towel and toweling it off to uh, give it I, time to build it, up it would, that base? Yeah, you would probably wanna let that sit a little bit. You can let it air dry. Um, but again, if you've got standing water in certain areas, like, yeah, you could take a paper towel to that, just kind of soak it. But yeah, really, really kind of let that acid work and, uh, and build up that passive layer. So here at Harkin, we actually use uh, citric acid. It's uh, actually got a nice little bucket of it right here. Um, citric acid works great. Uh, it's environmentally friendly. Uh, you know, a lot of companies still use nitric acid, but again, a, everybody's trying to move to be a little bit more green. Uh, we want to save the fishies, right? So essentially what we do here is uh, soak it in the citric acid a little bit. And you're going to want to use this brush just to remove that iron oxide. Now, as you can already see, it's starting to clean up pretty well. I mean, there may be minor remnants of it, but with just a few swipes, you know, maybe give it a little splash there back in the acid, uh, it cleans up real nice. Uh, again, this citric acid that we use at Harkin is uh, Citrusurf. You can actually pick this up at a lot of places. So it comes in spray bottles, gels, and liquid or powders you can add to water. Uh, so another thing we, we commonly see, uh, if you can look in here we got a lot of like hard water stains and it's got a nice mirror finish under there in this instance I wouldn't recommend uh, using a scrubby that can kind of leave some sort of like it'll look like it's scratched up um, what I would suggest is if you have something like your your citric acid or you can just apply it with a terry cloth or in this case I'm just using paper towel give it a little elbow grease and and really try to buff it out Again, 
this is, uh, this is just hard water stains. Again, it could be calcium, it could be anything else that's in the water, um, just building up on the surface. All right, so you can already start to see the difference. Got a real nice shiny surface again versus your more water stained area. So Phil, you went through the different types of stainless and the different grades and so forth like that. What are the three most common types you'll see us using here at Harkin? So the products we mostly focus on are your Austinetic, your 300 series. Um, you've got your 17.4, that's uh, this guy here, and your duplex. Uh, the 300 series, uh, that's got all your corrosion resistance, but you're sacrificing strength. Um, you may notice, you know, your shackles start to elongate a little bit. That's how you know it's time to replace them because you've had them for 20 years and they're finally starting to show signs of wear. Um, again, you're not going to see that with your 17.4 here. Um, that has a little bit more strength, but again, you're sacrificing your corrosion resistance for the amount of strength you're getting. Um, it's not to say it's not corrosion resistant, but it's not as much as your 300 series. Um, a good combination of the two, of strength and corrosion resistance, is our duplex. Uh, we typically use a 2205 duplex in-house, um, which again, it's, it's super corrosion resistant. I mean, the, the percentage of chromium in it is astounding. Uh, and the amount of uh, you know, strength you're going to get with that product, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. When we're talking about grades of stainless, what grade is that? So uh, these head posts here, a lot, of, a lot of what's going on in this car, these are all 300 series, typically 304, 316. Um, high chrome, high nickel, uh, stainless steel, very formable. Uh, that's why, you know, especially in a lot of these guys, um, that's why we use that specific grade. You know, it's ductile. You know, it's easy to form, it's easy to shape. Um, and it looks great once it's shined up. It's corrosion resistant. It's, it's what you need for that product. So what grade's that pad eye? So this pad eye is your 17.4. You want the 17.4 on this particular type of pad eye because you want, you want to have that strength. What yeah. makes it stronger? So, so 17.4 is, is a higher strength stainless steel. What actually makes it higher strength is, you know, there's the carbon content and the actual, the other alloying elements within it. Uh, your 316s, you have two main ones, which is chrome and nickel. Uh, chrome, nickel, moly, and a 316 because you're going to have a little bit more uh, strength and ductility. Uh, but again, these grades, they're hardenable. You know, that's another thing a lot of people don't understand. A 300 series, you can't really harden. It's not something we throw through a, a heat treatment. Uh, this grade, we can, we can heat treat in a, a couple different ways to get different strength properties out of it. Again, I'm Neil Evans with the tech team. I want to thank Phil. We threw a lot of information at you. If you do have questions or concerns about your stainless and maintenance isn't taking care of it, let us know. We'll do our best to help you out. Phil and I are off to become a bartender's best friend.